the book of Judges, uh, chapter 6, it sets the stage for Gideon's calling as a judge over Israel. At the time, Midian, along with other sons of the east, would come into Israel like locusts to destroy the land. We are explicitly told that they are like locusts. And what do locusts do? They consume crops. They eat. They eat the fruit of the land. They come in like a swarm and they devour. We are told the Midianites uh, and their camels uh, were without number. And uh, their camels were likely used as load-bearing animals to take crops and things from Israel back to the east. And that's why Gideon is threshing his wheat in secret. He didn't want the hard work of sowing his crop to be stolen. For you kids, it would be like working on a homework assignment for all night, and then somebody comes along and they steal it and they put their name on top of it. He didn't want these outsiders to come in and consume the fruit of his labor, the Lord, uh, which the Lord had given uh, to Israel. Now I want you to consider the Midianite. I want you to think about what he's doing. The Midianite wants the fruit of the Lord's people without being with the Lord's people. Which is another way of saying he wants the fruit of the Lord without the Lord. This we can call the Midianite impulse. And it's an impulse which prefers life outside of Israel, but it loves the fruit of Israel. And all throughout, all throughout Scripture, when the people of God start acting evil, the prophets compare them to those outside of the covenant. You're being like Egypt now. You're being like Sodom. You're being like Babylon. I submit to you that the church is now being like Midian. We have many Midianites among us. They love the fruit of God's people, but not enough to ever do the hard work of joining a local assembly. Certainly not enough to ever be loyal for more than five minutes. The Midianite is an unstable man, unreliable. He seeks to evade accountability. He hoodwinks those with good intentions. He uses pious convictions to cloak his deeply rebellious heart. He saddles his camels with the time and the energy and the food and the hospitality of God's people, and he throws up his deuces and says, see you later. And what's tragic about all of this is that the people of God are taken to be suckers in all of it. Not always, but sometimes. They're like the person who gives a sluggard money simply because he rattles his tin can in their direction. And what makes this even more tragic than that is that this Midianite is missing out on the blessings of God while thinking they're following God. Ultimately, the Midianite is afraid of healing and freedom because healing and freedom is hard. It strikes at pride. It takes away treasured sins that you don't want to give up. It looks a lot like dying. So those of you in the church who operate with this Midianite impulse, repent of it. Get rid of it. And instead, be who God has called you to be, an Israelite. This reminds us of our own need to confess.